Hey there, let me show you some techniques to debug C++ mixed with some .NET, also known as a mixed mode application. So basically, mixed mode means that the .NET application has got a native module loaded inside. Usually, the native module is written in C or C++ or even C++ COM. The native module is usually loaded as a p invoke platform invoke statement or is loaded as a COM callable wrapper. Debugging native functions in WinDebug is slightly different than debugging .NET managed functions in WinDebug. Let me explain in this video two concepts that are slightly different when debugging a mixed mode application, which is in regard to how memory is arranged in the application and how stacks are displayed within the application. The commands are very similar to native and managed debugging, but with a slight twist that shows a slight difference when the application is mixed mode. Let me switch to my sample application uh, what I've done is I've written a sample mixed mode application and I've actually loaded it in WinDebug, run the application and hit a breakpoint. Because this application is mixed mode, I have gone ahead and loaded the SOS plugin and I've gone ahead and loaded SOS EX plugin so that I can use the commands from SOS and SOS EX to debug the mixed mode application. I have videos in this playlist on how to load .NET plugins and I also have videos on this playlist how to load symbols for the native uh, application. So definitely watch those videos first before this video or just follow along if you already know how to load symbols and how to load the plugins for .NET. .NET applications use several heaps for its garbage collector, which is stored separately than the native heaps. This means to view the memory, there are two separate set of commands that are used to view memory for a mixed mode application. The command to use to view the .NET manage heap is to actually use dump heap. So if I run dump heap minus stat, I get a view of all the objects that are in memory regardless of the heap. The actual heap itself is not really that useful because the garbage collector is a generational garbage collector the objects actually move from heap to heap. So to view the objects in memory, generally you don't have to view the heap, rather you just run dump heap, which will just show all the objects in memory and the statistic of the number of count of objects and the total size. The large object heap will also appear in the bottom. In my test application, I don't have any large objects, so there's nothing in the large object heap. But if there was, there will be a line at the bottom for the large object heap. I have several videos on this playlist on how to use dump heap to diagnose issues. All those videos are relevant. If you want to view more about dump heap, go and watch those videos. They have descriptions on how you can use dump heap and the statistics and GC root. All those commands work in a mixed mode application. If you want to view more information about the heap, you can run the command ee heap, which will show you all the .NET heaps. This list does have the size of the heap. This size is counted for the size of your application. So if you are trying to get the total memory size of a mixed mode application, always remember to run ee heap to get the actual size of the heap because this size is counted as part of the private bytes of the application. The native heap, on the other hand, is not written in ee heap or in dump heap. Instead, you have to run the command heap minus s. Okay? This command only shows the native heaps. It will not show the .NET heap. So in this example over here, this first heap has a little bit of size to it. The other heaps are really small and it does not have any of the .NET objects inside. This is intentional. The .NET heaps are not measured in the same way as the native heaps. As with the .NET heaps, I have a few videos in this playlist as well in which I do memory debugging with the native heap. All those commands will work with a mixed mode application. Although it is pretty rare to have a mixed mode application in which you have to dump all the heaps in order to debug it. But the commands are there if you need to scan the memory and if you need to search through the native heaps to find a particular object or a memory leak, you can still run those commands. 
The only difference is that some of the global flags don't work. I will make a video in the future about which global flags do not work in mixed mode applications. It's a bit more involved so I want to get this video out of the way first. But you can do some level of native debugging with the heaps. Well, with the heaps, it's pretty easy to explain that a mixed mode application just has two separate heaps and two separate set of commands in order to view the heap. So it's pretty straightforward. But with stacks, it's a whole lot more complicated because the native stack and the managed stack are mangled together and so both stacks appear in the same list. In this sample application, I have actually already launched WinDebug and attached to the program and put a breakpoint in it. So currently right now, trade zero is actually at a breakpoint at a test function that I've written in order to illustrate the mixed mode application. Because the application is mixed mode, if I run K, I will get a stack that is correct, but it will not translate every line correctly. The top of the stack is a native C module, mix mode shared one, and the function compute sample value, the symbol for that function loaded correctly, hence the function is on the top. If I scroll a bit lower, I will see that the frame IP is not in any known module. This is correct because what's happening is that there is a translation layer between native and managed code in which this is dynamically produced. So there is no symbol for that location. And so we need to use other commands to see what is in that translation layer. In my example over here, I also have symbols for the c .net code. That is why the source code line appears over here. And that is why the function description appear appears over here. This is not always the case. If you do not have symbols loaded or if the compile does not explicitly have debug enabled, you may not get symbols, but you can still debug it. You just have to use different commands. So in .NET debugging, if I run CLR stack, this will also show a correct stack. But the difference is it will omit all the native code. Now, if I look at the address over here and it says IL stop P invoke, and it has a function below here that matches exactly this function here. This is actually correct. If I look at the stack frame and the IP frame, it will all be correct. The difference is CLR stack only walks the .NET portion. It omits the native portion. So to get a complete stack, there are two commands we can use. The first command is we can run dump stack. What dump stack does is that it walks the native stack and it walks the managed stack and combines both the results together. If I scroll up over here, I can actually see that the stack is pretty long and it is going to actually show the methods over here, the caller and the callee, and it's going to show the layout of all the stack functions, but it writes every single frame that exists. And so the output is extremely verbose. It is correct, but it is very verbose. A technique I like to use is to use the plugin SOSEX over here. This plugin SOSEX, I have a video in this playlist again that shows how to load this plugin and where to get it from. But this plugin has got a handy command called MK. And what this function does is that it will look at all the frames, but it will omit those frames that are not important it will consolidate the output so that it's not so verbose. And it looks pretty neat that this is a stack of native and managed code written where I can see every line, including the p invoke stub, which I wrote inside the source code. If we look at all the frames over here, we can see that all the frames stacked one on top of the other. WinDebug does not actually know that the frames are actually different in any significant way. So if you want to look at the variables of a particular frame, just say we want to look at frame zero, we can just use dv, which is to show native variables. This command works because the dv command looks at the symbols and then it decodes the stack and it shows the native variables. I have these variables on the stack frame zero, so it works. Now, if I try to view the manage frame, so a manage frame is slightly different than a native frame. The command is mframe3 switches to frame number 3, which is manage. If we switch to this frame and type dv, uh, we get an output. This output is incorrect. This is not frame 3. The reason is the dv command looks at the registers, 
but it cannot actually understand that this is a managed frame. So to view a managed frame, we actually use MDV, which shows us a different output. It is because MDV understands that this is a managed frame and so it will look at the variables from a different location and you will PC together what are the local variables in this location. This also works if we want to run DSO, which shows us all the objects on the stack. This is because DSO can walk all the managed frames and accumulate together all the pointers and it can decode all the objects. The Output for DSO is pretty verbose. It doesn't actually mean that there is this number of objects on the stack. It just means that the pointer has been declared multiple times. DSO works even though it is a mixed mode stack because there is managed frames. If there is no managed frames, DSO won't work. Now, if we run K again and go back to this uh, function over here in which we have an address but we have no symbol, there is a manual way to decode it. If I were to run IP to MD and put any address I want, if there is a .NET manage function at that address, it will decode that function and give me the method name. This is also handy if you type K and you get a list and you notice there are just one or two lines which don't appear, you can try IP to MD to see whether it is .NET. The simplest way of course is to just run MK and it will just decode everything. But once in a while, it's pretty handy to just do IP to MD. Generally, debugging a mixed mode application is not really that, that difficult or that different. Once you get used to the fact that the commands are relatively the same and you just use MK all the time, it becomes pretty seamless whether it's mixed mode or whether it is a native or managed application. I use this technique all the time. The reason is COM objects are generally written as native C++. And so when they are used in .NET, they end up as being .NET mixed mode applications. The COM callable wrapper that wraps COM objects, especially for dispatch objects, always results in a mixed mode application. So knowing how to debug mixed mode in WinDebug is certainly an advantage because in Visual Studio, debugging mixed mode kind of breaks down if you don't have the right symbols or the right plugins and it's very difficult to make sense of the stack. But WinDebug, it's not an issue, just load the .NET commands and use MK and it can debug native and .NET at the same time. Now there's a lot more about mixed mode debugging that I skipped and jumped over because it's just way too much to put into one video. I'll make another video after this about exception handling in a mixed mode environment and about GFlex in a mixed mode environment. But these are some of the techniques that I use. I actually use these techniques really a lot due to the prevalence of mixed mode applications especially on Windows 10. So definitely learn these techniques and give it a try if you've never tried it before. If you have used mixed mode in WinDebug, let me know in the comments below how it went and let me know any problems you have faced while trying to use mixed mode debugging in WinDebug. Anyway, gentle reminder to subscribe, give a like and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos. It's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.